Yo, Sachan. How's Namba? He ran off to go see his brother. It's really cute how he wants to check on him. Yeah, I couldn't be happier for the guy. Uh, same with me. I didn't think he'd make it, to tell you the truth. It's nice to hear some good news for once. Yeah. Even if it means Nanba will probably be saying goodbye soon. Makes sense. He only came here to look for his bro. Not like he's got much reason to hang with us anymore. Yeah. I realize that. In the meantime, we need to get this guy talking. Let's get started then. <laughs> Ungag him. <laughs> Don't you dare shout. Try anything funny, you'll catch hell. Try to run, you get hit. Don't answer a question, you get hit. That's how it has to be. Now, how did you fall in with the Omi Alliance? I notice when you tell them to jump, they ask how high. Why is that? Hey, remember the rules for not answering a question? Let's not resort to beating him just yet. Huh? But if we go easy on him, he's just gonna... As we speak, the Omi Alliance may well be looking for you. But, it's going to take them some time. How competent are they? Will they get here before we finish peeling off your fingernails? Ask him what he thinks about forcing us to burn down our own home. Huh. Personally, I won't be stopping at just the fingernails. Get it? We're serious. Now tell us how you're connected to the Omi Alliance. Why are you the one holding their leash? I'm not the one holding the leash. I didn't really think you were. Who is then? You know. Ryo Aoki. Yes. You all know him? Who doesn't know the governor? The real question is. What's his real name? Oh, don't play dumb. We've done our homework. Uh, what? Masato Arakawa. Uh, how do you know that name? A long time ago, I knew him as the young master. He knew me as Ichi. Back when the Arakawa family was still in the Tojo clan. So, Ryo Aoki really is Masato Arakawa, huh? I met him almost 20 years ago, when we were studying abroad in America. He was majoring in political economics and sharp as attack. Was he going by Ryo Aoki when you met? Yes. I didn't learn his other name until later. Was he in a wheelchair? No. But I heard he used to be, which actually I don't understand. Was he, really? Yeah. Then he must have gotten treatment in the US. You can get anything there if you have enough money. Even unapproved medical procedures. So he had money? He certainly lived a lavish lifestyle. I could tell he was wealthy right away. I figured it couldn't hurt to get to know the guy better. Kiss ass. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I mean, sure, I knew he was rich, but I didn't know he was that rich. And it was shocking to learn about all his connections to the criminal underworld. I was just amazed at all the opportunities he'd grown up with. And yet... Uh... What? 
He wasn't satisfied with any of it. Not even a little bit. He wanted something completely different. And what was that? Front-facing power. Front-facing power? That was his term for it. He used to say not everyone can be controlled by Yakuza threats or bribes. People like that can only be controlled with front-facing power. Power you could see. Basically, popularity. Popularity? What, you think that's something only a teenager would want? Well, sure. Then you don't understand democracy. Under that system, it's the only path to power. As long as you're well-liked by the majority, you can get away with anything. I hate politics. His money and criminal connections he called his rear-facing power. He said without the front-facing part, his power wasn't complete. So he decided... To become governor of Tokyo. Yes. He said the governor had the most front-facing power of anyone in the country. Does he? Isn't the Prime Minister above him? The Prime Minister is just a figurehead, chosen internally by the Citizens' Liberal Party. So essentially, you only become Prime Minister by having a few friends on the inside. But to be Governor of Tokyo? That takes real popularity. Ten million people have to like you. Every vote you get represents a tiny bit of the power you have. But what about the power of money? The Prime Minister controls the national budget. <laughs> But Tokyo's budget alone is 14 trillion yen. That's more than some countries. So the governor has both an incredible amount of money and the support of the public. <laughs> Who can compete with that? Ryo Aoki knew all of this. He wanted that governor's seat long before I met him. But I was happy to become a partner in his grand plan. Step one was founding Bleach Japan. <laughs> You think you're his partner, huh? You sure you're not his servant? Take it from me. The young master can really crack a whip. <laughs> what? We're done? No, we're not. Was it his idea to form Bleach Japan, or was it yours? It was his. And getting rid of all the Grey Zones was him too? Yes. Although when he first explained it, <laughs> I thought it was pretty naive. But you went with it anyway. Why? Because I knew he could use the Arakawa family to recruit lots of people fast. It was an advantage no other political figure had. I knew that then, and I was right. Pretty soon, he was delivering results. For me, following him was a win-win situation. <laughs> the young master knows exactly how to use puppets like you. Guys who get all weak in the knees just for some cash and power. <clears throat> <laughs> Come on, can't expect me not to make fun of a suck-up like you. So what happened next? Early on, people thought of Bleach Japan as a small advocacy group of nice young idealists. Our only goals were to eradicate corruption and make society fair and equal. We marched around the city shouting those demands over and over. Really? This sounds like a waste of time and money. I thought so too at first, but Aoki knew exactly what he was doing. He had his ear to the ground. He knew what society wanted. What do you mean? Eliminating corruption, creating a fair society. Words like that have a lot of appeal. People thought it was naive, sure. But deep down, it was exactly what they wanted. So people would praise us for our morality, if not our practicality. <laughs> Crazy, huh? A bunch of youths who'd never worked hard, shouting for the world to do as they said. But all the attention made them feel accomplished. I thought people only did that shit because it's trendy. Exactly my point. We made it trendy, and that attracted people who wanted to seem hip. Those types are everywhere. You can hardly walk down the street without bumping into them. They came to us in droves. The organization grew bigger and bigger. 
We even paid a bunch of women to join so we'd be gender balanced, and that attracted more people. It was funny to see those girls bring in guys who claimed to be so passionate about the cause. <laughs> Hell, that's how we got Kume, now that I think about it. It took some time, but eventually we had members all across the country. <laughs> that gave us an unexpected bonus. What bonus? Turns out, when you attack Grey Zones, the corrupt local politicians start coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> they just can't resist. They're too addicted to money and influence. So a bunch of corruption was going on. It was so easy to grease their palms, or even blackmail them. I mean, so often we would just stumble across info that would completely ruin them if it went public. You call that a bonus? It's a bonus when you can make politicians do whatever you want. <laughs> Makes you even worse than the politicians. How many members does Bleach Japan have now? If you count all permanent employees at every branch, we're 500 strong. Wow, 500 tight asses. But then there's the 100,000 people who join us for marches. 100,000? Yep. And here you have their leader tied up and pissed off. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. May I ask you a question now, Kasuga-san? Shoot. Why are you here? Aren't you ex Arakawa? You know, if you want back in the family, I could put a word in with the governor. Hmm. Think about it. How do you benefit from helping the Eugene Three anyway? Why not leave all this trouble behind you? Yeah, trouble's a good word for it. Right? So, why not let me go now? It'd make both our lives easier. Look, I don't want back in the family. But I'm no ally of the Eugene Three either. No? I just want to get the guy who killed my boss. In fact, when all this started, I didn't know a damn thing about Mabuchi or your plan. <clears throat> Get the picture now, kiss ass? We're not doing this for ourselves. We're doing it because someone picked a fight. And we're just making sure justice is served. Unfortunately for you, you're the guy who picked the fight. <clears throat> Hey, you're the one who asked the dumb question. Think before you open your mouth next time. We are not done. Ready to move on, Ogasawara-san? You and the young master got Bleach Japan off the ground. What came next? After he got it working on a national scale, he started Phase 2. He sought out media attention constantly. Another brilliant move. Press flocked from all over to interview the charismatic young man behind Bleach Japan. He was front and center every day. He even went on some talk shows. <laughs> it helped that he had a great smile he was willing to flash at every camera. Seriously? What does it matter if you look good on TV or not? <laughs> it matters a lot, even more than what you say. When it comes to popularity, looks are everything. Fine. Is this story anywhere close to the present day yet? Yes, actually. In 2010, Alki ran for the House of Counselors. When he announced his campaign, he said he was leaving Bleach Japan. But that was only true on paper. Sure, we all know he still controlled it through you, his loyal dog. Come on, keep talking. With the endorsement of the Citizens Liberal Party, he won that election in a landslide. And two years ago, he ran for governor. 
Is that a landslide too? I wouldn't call it that. Why not? It was more than a landslide. His popularity was off the charts. He had loads of funding. On top of all that, the Arakawa family dug up dirt on all his rivals. Truthfully, it was basically impossible for him to lose. The election was practically a formality. <sighs> and afterwards, he just kept riding the wave. Six months post-election, he exterminated the Tojo clan with the Kamurocho 3K plan. Of course, he only pulled that off because the Arakawa family was feeding him Tojo secrets. Did that happen around the same time as this? Yes. And people loved him even more when they saw him wiping out the Yakuza. He hardly wiped out the Yakuza. The Tojo just got replaced by the Omi Alliance. That's true. Once the Tojo clan was gone, he opened the gates wide for the Omi. I imagine being made the acting captain of the Omi was a fitting reward. Why didn't the people complain about the Omi coming in? The Omi seizure of Kamurocho went down quietly. No mess, no fuss. Everyone just let the Omi slide peacefully onto the vacant throne. Did they even notice what was going on? <laughs> I think they figured every town has its share of thugs, Tojo clan or not. As long as crime is low overall, they don't care if the thugs are Omi, or just lone actors. So Aoki's plan worked perfectly. Yeah. It was the rise of Arakawa, both father and son securing total power. The son is governor of Tokyo, and his daddy's the acting captain of Japan's largest gang. Pretty sweet deal, huh? Hmm. Wait, hold the phone. What? Maybe society didn't care about the Omi invasion, but I bet the police did. You really trying to convince me the TPD stayed quiet during this whole thing? <laughs> they did stay quiet. And trust me, they had their reasons. Like what? Well, in the absence of the Tojo clan, the power vacuum attracted all sorts of non-Yakuza gangs. They were two-bit thugs going on little crime sprees, trying to get while the getting was good. They had no connection to each other, no patterns, so the police didn't know what to do. Soon, the crime clearance rate in Kamurocho was taking a nosedive. <laughs> but they knew if the Omi Alliance came in and took control, it would reduce the petty crimes. Plus, the governor would be able to liaise between the police and the Omi. It was a win-win. <laughs> ironic, isn't it? The cops wiped out the Yakuza only to find they needed more Yakuza. They weren't finished cavorting with criminals after all that. The commissioner's still taking Arakawa bribes. Huh? So according to you, the middleman between the cops and the Arakawa family is Aoki. <laughs> so there's another three-way stalemate in Kamurocho. Only instead of the EG-3, this one has the cops, the governor, and the Yakuza. <laughs> what the hell kind of point are you trying to make? The Omi didn't just stroll into Kamurocho. They had to have paid off the police commissioner. You don't know that for sure. Don't play dumb. If the police did nothing while the Omi replaced the Tojo clan, it's because someone at the top ordered them to. And Horono Uchi ain't the type of guy to give that order for no reason. There was something in it for him. <laughs> what proof do you have? I'm asking you for the proof. You gotta have something. Well? No, I don't. And I wouldn't know about it even if it does exist. After all, I'm just the governor's loyal dog, aren't I? A son of a bitch is what you are! Dachi-san, calm down. <sighs> now that the young master is governor of Tokyo, is he going after Ichincho? It seems like that's what he's doing. Yes, but his target isn't Ijincho itself. It's Utaka Ogikubo. Ogikubo? Yes. He's the only cabinet member who's not totally cowed by Aoki. The rest of the cabinet does whatever Aoki says because of how popular he is. But Utaka Ogikubo, chair of the Citizens Liberal Party, is still holding out. A politician who actually has a spine? Now that's a rare thing. Agreed. And he's stubborn. 
Under normal circumstances, he'd be a lost cause. But Aoki has come to know some things about him. Like how he also has some sway in the criminal underworld. Aoki has proof of that? No, he just recognizes the signs. Like Aoki, Oki Kubo rose to power through shady connections. When you do that, there's a telltale smell that lingers. Aoki recognized what he was smelling, that's all. And if he gets Oki Kubo out of power, then he'll be truly unstoppable. But it can't be easy for him to remove the guy. It's not. Aoki wasn't even going to try unless he knew he'd be successful. But he knew he would be once he smelled that criminal element on Oki Kubo. Then he knew they both shit in the same hole. A crude way to put it, but what can I say? So you were sent to the Eugene Show branch of Bleach Japan to help make use of this dirt on Oki Kubo? And the first thing you did was buy off Mabuchi. Let me guess. You told him you had the Omi Alliance's support. He couldn't resist that kind of bait. You told him he'd get in good with them if he helped you. Mabuchi's never liked the way Jincho is divvied up among the Ijin Three. And with his high rank, he's the de facto leader of all the other members who also don't like it. Sounds like he was the perfect prey for you. Prey which you sent out to kill our boss, and made it look like a suicide. That murder got the Ijin Three all riled up and suspicious of each other. Whose big-brained idea was that? It was Mabuchi's. He knew it would bring down the Great Wall. Myself, I was never one for murder. Oh yeah? Well, an innocent guy is still dead. If you didn't give the order, then someone above you did, right? Say it! It was your boss, Ryu Aoki, wasn't it? Yes, it was him. I told him about Mabuchi's plan. I didn't think he'd go for it because it was so risky. In fact, I proposed a different plan of my own. But unfortunately, he saw nothing wrong with Mabuchi's plan. He was willing to accept high risk for high return, and he was eager to get the jump on Ogi Kubo. The young master saw nothing wrong with killing a man? It would have just been another murder, except someone had to pry open the crack it made in the Great Wall. You talking about me? <laughs> yes, but don't take it personally. It was always going to come to this eventually. Mabuchi wasn't going to stop until he had an excuse to start a war with the Seiryu clan. She's right. Our plan was to provide the excuse, and in the chaos, find something to connect Ogikubo to Ijincho's criminals. Sure enough, we found a counterfeiting enterprise that's been supporting the Ijin 3 for decades. Jackpot. Yeah, don't take too much pride in that. You had a hell of a lucky break. <laughs> yes, we did. We were lucky that you're bad at choosing friends, because it was Nanba who told us. He told us about the fake money and where the heart of the operation was. <laughs> it was all due to him that we were able to mobilize such a large number of Omi. I would love to thank him. Where is he, by the way? We ain't telling you. We're the ones asking questions. <laughs> Such a shame. Songhui, what should we do now? Our counterfeiting business is burned and gone. So Ogi Kubo's already lost a major source of his power. That alone is a victory for Aoki. And as far as what will happen to Ijincho, the ball's in his court. The Queen of the Komi Jewel is so calm in the face of impending doom. Excuse me? This city will meet the same fate as Kamurocho. What are you on about? Soon Ijincho will be under complete Omi control. No more Great Wall of Muscle to stop it. Don't you see that? <laughs> It's the Yakuza! They're coming here! Shit! How'd they find us? How many are there? I saw five of them, but it looked like they were on their phones. They're probably calling for backup! 
You probably could have warned us a tad sooner. Hey, isn't he? <laughs> I've got a sharp nose for rats, especially when they're all in one nest. <laughs> Chief! Sorry. I couldn't protect you. No, Chief. We should be apologizing to you. Hurry up and get me out of here, you guys! We will. But you better let Captain Sawashiro know who rescued you. You got that? Fine, just hurry up! Captain Sawashiro. All right, I'm pumped! Let's exterminate all the vermin! Let's do it! Yeah, about time I got some action. You're gonna get a little bored over here. Oh, I missed it. Wow. Oh, what? what a cheap shot. Right. Beat up this guy. There you go. Perfect. Alright, now let's do the breaking top. Oh, is that GG for everyone? Come on, don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move. Nice. With these AOE moves, I'm solid. Damn it. You shithead. Come on now, get caught. Here we go. Yeah, now. Oh, shoot. I have so much money again. showed them unfortunately I think they showed us huh? why do you say that they took off with Agasawara he's gone yes that was hardly our victory whatever I'd already asked him everything I wanted to sorry about the fighting chief <laughs> well my people and I don't have much right to complain. <laughs> Seeing as we're not supposed to be here anyway. However... Yeah? Next time you kidnap someone, take them somewhere else. Totally. Uh, I mean, it's not like I'm gonna kidnap someone again. Probably. <laughs> Kasuga, it's Hoshino, from the Seiryu clan. The chairman? He's never called this number before. Then it can only be bad news. Yeah. I see. Not exactly. No, Komi Jewel's system is out of commission. For once, I only know as much about what's going on as you do. I'm guessing the Seiryu clan's rank and file is probably real pissed off right now. That's what Kotsuka was saying. When will we have it back up and running? Huh. Now there's a question. I won't be able to say until I survey the damage, but it definitely won't be anytime soon. Yes, that's fine. What'd the chairman say? The Seiryu clan quelled their infighting. Captain Takabe handled it. Really? He made it out okay. Was there anything else? Yes. Problem with the Yokohama Lioma. Hoshino hasn't been able to reach Zhao at all. Huh? This whole time? Yeah. For all he knows, Zhao could be dead. That's why he was asking us to use our surveillance system. He wanted us to check on Zhao. 
Can any pieces of that system even be saved? I doubt it. Damn. And you know what else? The last time Zhao called us, he told us over the phone there was a coup d'etat happening in the Lumang. I wish I could use my guys, but there's sort of a coup going on. Mabuchi's been whipping all the boys into a frenzy. They ain't happy the counterfeiting was kept secret. Ah, shit, I'm out of time for chit chat. Looks like we got another job ahead of us, Songkui san. And what makes you say us? Really? After Zhao put your Komi Jewel ahead of himself, even though he was in danger? He was the one who told us to help you instead of his own group. Now he's in even worse trouble, and you're just gonna leave him hanging? A fair point. Besides, if you want to resist an Omi takeover, you can't afford to lose him. That's my take anyway. Jeez, Kasuga, well, are you gonna head over to Zhao's right this second or something? Surely not. Damn right I am. Well, just, just, just hold on a second, would you? Staging a rescue in the middle of a coup d'etat is insane. Yeah, I understand. So, you coming or not? Ah, who said anything about me sitting out? I'm so close to cornering Horinouchi. Look at us. We all started in different places, each of us on our own mission. But now they're all coming together. Yeah, that's right. And that's because we had each other's backs. So what do you say, Songkui san? You're practically part of the crew. Do you have her backs? Kasuga. Come on. Think what we could do if the Komi Jewels started taking this alliance seriously. <sighs> okay. Now we're talking. Fucking A. Now, let's go and see if Xiao needs our help. Hey, you never know. He might be fine. Then we can just forget it. Now there's an idea I like. Just forgetting it. Yamba? I just got back from seeing my brother. Everything Song Hui said about him was true. Plus, they set him free. Nice! That's awesome, man! I'm real happy for you. Thanks. What's up? He still got the long face and all. There's just something I want to say. Okay, shoot. Ichiban, you need to understand something. Ijin Cho is gonna be what it's gonna be. Leave it alone. What? I mean, why do you even care what happens to the Ijin 3? Why are you doing all this for them? Why not just get out of this dump? Why should you keep sticking your neck out for them? <laughs> You're starting to sound like you care about me. I just think you need to stop playing hero. That's why you end up getting used. Especially by guys like me. Used? I don't see it that way. You did what you had to do to help your brother. I get that. But doing what I had to for my brother? That led to bad things. It made me help the scumbags who killed Nonomiya. But that was... But nothing! <clears throat> I can't wash the blood off my hands. They're not the only thing that's stained. It feels like my entire soul is tainted. Like I'm branded forever. All because of this goddamn town. Honestly, I'm just sick of this shithole! Namba... Nothing good is gonna come from staying here and helping these people. You'll eventually end up just like me. You don't want that, do you? <sighs> come on, Ichiban. Think of yourself for once. You did 18 years of hard time. Don't let other people's shit keep you a prisoner. I'm not the only one stuck in the shit, man. This whole city is. But Ryu Aoki and Oki Kubo dragged everyone into their stupid power struggle. They started this whole mess. I'm just one guy caught in the middle of it. And keep in mind, I ain't just some random outsider. Me and Aoki, we basically have the same dad. Aoki would never put it this way, but we're brothers. And that's how I feel, at least. So I got some responsibility for him. I can't just walk away when he's causing all these problems. You've already gone way beyond the call, man. I could say the same about you. We aren't even brothers, but look how hard you're trying to save me right now. You're a true friend, man. Admit it. Don't say that. I'm nobody's friend. You know what I just realized? We're not even all that different. 
Oh, please. No, really. You, me, Adachi-san, Sachan. We all just want to know the truth. That's been the core of everything we do. Figuring out what's real in a world full of lies. What do you think of that? Am I talking out my ass? I don't know, but I've heard enough. I'm leaving. Fine. But I won't say goodbye. Because I think we'll be seeing each other again soon. Call on me and I'll come running, pal. Take care of yourself. Should we stop him? Uh, he said his piece. I even see where he's coming from. Kinda. <sighs> well, that's that. Let's fucking do this! <laughs> I'm ready. Song Hui, I apologize if I'm overstepping, but shouldn't you stay behind? And why would I do that? Our people in the Komiju are scared and confused right now. And I believe your leadership in person would be a great comfort. Hmm. Please. They need you. Sounds like you got a lot on your plate, Songhui. It's cool. I know we were just pressing you for help, but you got your people to take care of. I do. But it doesn't mean I'm going to abandon you, Kasuga. Jungi Han will stay with you. That way we can keep in touch. Seriously? Oh, that'd be great! I am at your service, Ichiban Kasuga. Damn it, no, I wanted baby cakes. What the hell? Who told you I wanted you in my team? I mean, I know you look like you're an OP guy, but still. God damn it. If Zhao hadn't sent you to us, we couldn't have fulfilled our duty to Okikubo. So we will do whatever's within our power to help you. Huh. Jungi Han is a very capable man. Hell yeah, he is. Thanks. Baby cakes, no. Kazuga-san, from what the Gomijo can tell, Zhao was last seen at his restaurant. I see. You mean, King Jin? Hopefully he's still alive. Now I have to like learn a whole different voice to do. How many more people am I gonna get added? I thought I was done. I thought we were only we were only gonna be a party of four, but I guess not, huh? Anyways, you guys, thank you for watching. That was a long episode of actually storytelling and cutscenes, but yeah. Uh, please leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't for even more gaming content. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next episode.